the abandoned St. Margaret's Hospital loomed ominously in the moonlight, a decrepit relic of a bygone era. A group of close friends, consisting of Lisa, a thrill-seeker with an affinity for the supernatural, her brother Jack, his girlfriend Mia, and their mutual friend Ben, gathered at the hospital's entrance, each of them carrying sleeping bags and flashlights. Lisa, fueled by a fascination with the paranormal, had convinced the others to spend the night in the notorious hospital, despite the eerie stories that surrounded it. The locals spoke of restless spirits and strange occurrences, but the friends dismissed such tales as mere superstition. Jack, the voice of reason in the group, was the first to voice his concerns. Are you sure about this, Lisa? This place gives me the creeps. Mia, who was more curious than frightened, added, it's just an old, abandoned building. What's the worst that could happen? Ben, the skeptic of the group, chuckled and said, Yeah, we probably just have a sleepless night and a good story to tell. With a mixture of excitement and trepidation, they entered the hospital, their flashlights illuminating the long, dim corridors. The air was heavy with the scent of decay, and the creaking floorboards added to the unsettling atmosphere. The friends ventured deeper into the building, exploring forgotten rooms and hallways. As the night advanced and the hospital grew colder, they settled in one of the abandoned patient wards. They laid out their sleeping bags, trying to ignore the sense of unease that had crept over them. They told stories, laughed, and tried to reassure themselves that the hospital was nothing more than an empty, eerie place. However, as the clock neared midnight, an oppressive silence enveloped them. The air seemed to grow colder still, and strange, unexplained noises echoed through the building. Shadows danced on the walls, and their flashlights flickered, casting eerie, elongated shapes. Then came the sound of faint, mournful wail, like a ghostly cry in the night. The friends huddled together, their expressions shifting from curiosity to fear. The wailing grew louder, seemingly echoing through the very walls of the hospital. Ben, who had been the skeptic, now looked pale and uncertain. That's not just the wind. Is it? The wailing continued to draw nearer, growing more intense. Jack and Mia fumbled for their flashlights, while Lisa whispered, we should find out where it's coming from. As they followed the sound, it led them to a room at the far end of the corridor. The door was slightly ajar, and an eerie, dim light seeped out. With hesitant steps, they pushed the door open and were met with a chilling sight. In the room, an old, rusted gurney stood beside a shattered window. At the gurney's foot lay a tattered hospital gown, and next to it, a pair of bloodied, child-sized shoes. The source of the wailing became apparent as a ghostly figure emerged, a young girl, her spectral form glowing softly with tears streaming down her ethereal cheeks. Lisa, who had been the driving force behind their adventure, now felt an overwhelming sense of guilt. She reached out to the spectral child, whispering, I am so sorry. We didn't mean to disturb you. We just wanted to explore. The ghostly girl's wailing turned into soft sobs, and she slowly faded away leaving the room in an eerie silence once more. The friends, deeply shaken by the encounter, retreated from the hospital with a newfound respect for the unexplainable. From that night on, they realized that there were places where the past's echoes could not be silenced, and the abandoned St. Margaret's Hospital would forever remain a place of haunting memories.